Hey, coach. Um, glad you're you're looking up basketball resources. If you have found this website, you're probably a basketball coach looking for resources for you as a coach. Um, I have the answer for your all your problems. Is go over and check out teachhoops.com. It's a it's a resource I started for coaches who want to get better. 14 day free trial. You'll love it. Go check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, and enjoy the video. Thanks. Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to show you that I'm a Disney fan, if you haven't seen it above. Anyway, um, I'm going to go through my philosophy on fouling. Um, I have a distinct one. Some of it's proven mathematically, some of it's not proven mathematically. Uh, things that I have found that are, that are useful in my world. Um, I'm going to show you why I do this. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a video clip of our 2011 state championship game. And I'll show you why I think timeouts and fouls are really important on the stretch. And then, uh, go through some studies and a couple other things here. So let me boot this up. All right. So you can see here, we're Madison Memorial. We're the white team playing the maroon red team. We're down three with a minute left. Okay. So I'm going to play this and I'm going to make it... I'm going to make it full screen. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this silent, but anyway, so we're down. Okay. Score timeout 30. Okay. <clears throat> um, there's about a minute left. I had, uh, I believe I had all my thirties. I had a, at least one timeout. So we're down one with 48 seconds. They, we follow them. They come down and hit, um, and make both 28.9. Again, we were running a lot of high ball screens with this group. Junior played at, uh, at Providence. Um, anyway, so we called another 30. Again, we foul right away. So we are fouling instantaneously on them. Um, make them go down and hit their free throws down the stretch. Again, a three-point game, 19-point seconds. So my guys, we've gone through this enough that they kind of know what to do. Um, so again, we're attacking the rim, might've traveled, good follow-up timeout. I believe I had to take a full here, but you'll notice, you'll notice kids are going again. We're down one. We're going to follow We followed again. They made both their free throws. There's eight seconds left. We ran a high ball screen. They hedged and helped boom. So we'll talk about screening at some other point. Um, I'm going to link the rest of this, but basically you could see that there was you know, I don't know how much time exactly there was, and I'm not going to go through all this, but we basically won this thing in three overtimes, and we won in three overtimes. It's a six-minute video, so I'm not going to show it all to you. Um, but we won. We basically won that game. Um, there's a, there was a Chris Weber thing they, where they called a timeout, and they didn't have one. Um, but anyway, so we were able to make a minute last seven minutes. We were able to foul, stop the clock. Um, so I am under the full, full and complete philosophy that if you don't have to use timeouts early, don't. Um, I've changed this a little bit in the sense that um, Wisconsin's gone to halves, which has kind of changed my philosophy a little bit. But um, I believe if you can keep those timeouts to the end, they are so valuable. Um, it's one of the reasons that if there's a loose ball on the floor in the first half, we're not calling a timeout. We're just going for it. Um, I tell my guys, if we lose it, whatever. But we're just going to go for it at that point. And everybody on our team knows that we're not calling a timeout on a loose ball. We're just, it's a scramble. It's a little bit of a rugby game at that point. Um, I will put in here definitely a link so you can watch that 2011. But what I, what I found from it, what, I, what I've seen, what my philosophy is, I want to be able to keep those timeouts as long as humanly possible down the stretch. I think they're super valuable. Because they allow us to set things up. They allow us to foul. They allow us to put the pressure back on you to make free throws. Um, there's so many reasons that those timeouts are valuable. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, following stops the clock. You know, I believe it should be three free throws. I believe we're, we're kind of messed up with the following down the stretch um, in the sense that you know, you, there's a reason they put a double bonus in. There's a reason they put, you know, you get to 10, you get two. When you get to 10, you should get three. 
Um, I'm not sure why that rule has not changed, but that's for another day and another discussion. Um, there have been some studies. I said I put a couple things in here. You know, end of game. I got to find out where I put that. Um, oh, right here. So th this is a this is a great one. Harvard anal analyzed it. You know, uh, and I'm a I love chi squared. In this sample, teams that did not follow one slightly more often for less statistical incline. This means there's no significant difference between the two strategies of following and not following. Um, and then you come down here, that means that in 2009, 2010, teams that were down by three points at the end of the game scored the necessary points at rates that did not defer based on which strategy the leading team pursued, whether you pulled it out, whether you didn't pull it out. So it's just a, it's an interesting read. There's a couple of them in there that I put. I think it would be a great discussion for us as, as, a, as a site to kind of talk about and, and, and kind of put. But um, I always believe that I can win the game. They're, you know, I'm there. I'm going to stop coaching when I don't think we can win um, and following and stopping the clock and making people hit shots. Cause my theory is you're going to shoot you even you can see in the game that I just showed you that state championship game, they were making their free throws. We were just able to make more. And then we hit a three when we needed to, you know, they kept getting two rather than three. And at some point along the line, we hit a three. It was able to put it into overtime and then it went back and forth. And eventually we hit a layup of, five seconds to go or something like that. I don't remember. So um, great discussion point. So kind of my philosophy on following. And then, you know, if you get a chance, watch the watch the YouTube clip. It's pretty uh, – I should have quit. I should have stopped coaching that year because I don't know if I can ever um, reach the pinnacle of that game, especially in the state of Wisconsin. But it was a good one. So um, let me know what you guys think. Hey, Coach, hope you liked that video. If you're looking for more videos just like that, check out teachhoops.com up above or down below in the show notes. I do not think you'll be disappointed. One-on-one -on -one calls, office hours, you name it, it's there for you. Learn from me. Let me help you become a better coach.